The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 7698 in the name of Bruce Crawford on the Sue Ryder report, Don't Write Me Off. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Bruce Crawford to open the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Mr Crawford. I thank you, President Officer. Uh, can, can I, as is normally done at this stage, thank those who have signed the motion for this evening's debate, and particularly those who have stayed behind for the debate. Can I also thank Sue Ryder for the support in the lead-up to today's debate, and in particular, Eleanor Jane. And over recent years, I've learned a great deal about the fantastic work that the charity Sue Ryder does, and I have huge admiration for that work. I know they deliver high-quality, much-needed home care in my constituency of Stirling, indeed across the country. What I also know is, is their passion for improving the care for people with neurological conditions in Scotland. And as we all know, neurological conditions can affect anyone of any age and can turn people's lives upside down, affecting people's ability to move, their ability to live the lives they used to. They can affect people's ability to look after themselves, their families, and their ability to work. So too, their ability to leave the house or their mental health. The list can go on and on. Their conditions can include progressive conditions such as multiple sclerosis, motor neurons disease, Huntington's, Parkinson's, and sudden ailments like a head injury or, this, or a stroke. All of these conditions can have a devastating impact on the individual and their family. So I'm delighted to have been supporting Sue Ryder in their campaign for better neurological care. Indeed, it's incredibly important work, as we're talking about a group of people who can have a devastating condition that can affect every aspect of their lives. And as if that were not enough, their condition can be coupled with care that may not always meet their individual requirements. So let's be clear, there's no question that if you have a neurological condition, you should receive good quality specialist care to try to manage what can be very complex conditions. One surprise for me from Sue Ryder's research is that revealed we don't even know how many people in Scotland have a neurological condition or where they live. Which begs the question, how can health boards and integration authorities plan to provide services to meet their needs? Indeed, in their first report, revealed that health boards and local authorities didn't know what neurological services that they or their counterparts in many cases provided. So, by gathering information such as this, people with neurological conditions and their families can be better advised on where to turn, for instance, for respite care or specialist speech and language therapy. As we know too, Occasions exist where people with neurological conditions of all ages have been placed in older people's care homes, and this is obviously not the appropriate setting for them. That is simply not a sustainable solution, nor one that can adequately meet the needs of those who may require specialist care. This report also showed that the national clinical standards for, for neurological health services were not, in a number of cases, being met. I am delighted, therefore, that since Sue Ryder shone a light on where neurological care in Scotland can be greatly improved, the Scottish Government has listened and is acting. It's vital that everyone works together to design services that meets the needs of people with these complex, life-changing conditions. So, coupled with the work of the Scottish Government's National Advisory Committee on Neurological Conditions and what it's doing to map neurological services in Scotland, there is now a chance to make a real difference in Scotland. And the very recent welcome announcement from the Scottish Government, after dedicated and informed campaigning by Sue Ryder and by others, 
that it is going to produce Scotland's first ever action plan on neurological conditions is a huge step forward. Not only that, but having carried out a review of the existing neurological standards, Health Improvement Scotland is now rewriting them to encompass all health and care services for people with neurological conditions. All this with a view to making these standards as person-centred as possible. This is good work and they should be applauded for it. President Officer, as the motion states, it's important that the Scottish Government works with people with neurological conditions, the third sector and our health and care services to ensure the new action plan and all other work is a success. I know that is the government's intention. So what now? The important thing is that all of the government's goodwill is capitalised on. And what I'd like to see is a commitment that once the action plan is out there, it's followed through to make sure new standards for neurological care are acted upon and measured in a meaningful way. And to help achieve this, I would ask the government to look, at, to, to look at whether the necessary level of funding is available for appropriate organisations to enable successful delivery. We also need integration authorities to be given support to provide care for this group of people. So I'd like to see the Scottish Government in consideration to another of Sue Ryder's recommendations to provide commissioning guidance for neurological services. The process of reforming neurological care in Scotland will require dedication and support to our integrated local health and social care services. I am confident we can build a system of care that is fit for the future. Indeed, the Scottish Government, to their credit, is trying hard to do that. But all of what we need to do, see now is action on the ground. There is really only one way to ensure that some people with neurological conditions in Scotland no longer feel written off and they're supported to live their lives as fully as possible. President Officer, in conclusion, I'm determined that this is one area of care that should not be used as a political football for cheap political point scoring. It will take all of us working together whilst recognising, yes, the very real challenges that exist to achieve solutions. So let's just do that. President Officer. Call Jeremy Balfour to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And can I thank uh, Bruce Crawford for uh, securing this debate uh, this afternoon. I suspect, suspect being informed that you've been diagnosed with a neurological condition must be very shocking. You must feel that you will never be able to cope with what life has dealt you with you. Over overwhelming feelings of sorrow, anger, and fairness will suddenly appear. Eventually, most people do adjust their lives, but only with support with such as organizations like Sue Ryder, who provide hospice and care at home, face people who are facing life-changing diagnosis. As well as providing expert medical care, Sue Ryder also provides emotional and practical support from personalised care through to advice, education and support services to help improve the lives of individuals, including carers and their families. Their knowledge and insight is vital if we are to improve services for people with neurological diseases. And I welcome the findings of the report. The first report was published in 2016, identified a lack of consistent data on the number of people with neurological conditions. Clinical standards for neurological services were not being followed, and the vast majority of health boards did not have service delivery plan, despite that being required by clinical standards. If we fast forward to this year, and the report published in September, aim to establish how much progress has been made and what difference the integration of health and social care was making to the lives of people with these conditions. Disappointingly, we found that health boards still do not have a service plan in line with national clinical standards 
and six health boards stated that no plans to develop joint plans with local authorities, despite the national and local policy direction to integrate health and social care services. When I was elected last year to the Scottish Parliament, I was made aware of the NHS Lothian Land Fine Service by a constituent who has MS and who used the service. My constituent, living on his own, appreciated the respite care provided by Land Fine Service, particularly enjoying the environment where he could talk with people and discuss the condition that we had. However, in 2010, NHS Lothian commenced the process of redesigning the service. Key elements of the redesign included a reduction in the bed numbers from 33 to 10 beds, an outreach team which, when fully established, would have more than seven staff, a new care support officer, and a fund to support carers with breaks from caring. NHS Lothian has assured me that the cost has not been the driving during the redesign, but instead they wanted a service fit for the 21st century. All well and good, but I discovered that six years on from the start of the redesign, there was still outstanding vacancy in the outreach element with ongoing discussions about the remaining posts. Now, I accept many people do want to be treated in their homes, and I welcome care in the community. But in my view, this redesign has not ensured better local, local faster access to health care, but it's put a vulnerable group even more vulnerable, and we simply haven't learnt the lessons. Now, I welcome the Minister's intent to produce an action plan, and I'm pleased and acknowledge it's been given to improve services for people living with neurological conditions. However, what struck me most about this report, and picked up by uh, Bruce Crawford, is still the lack of data on people with neurological conditions and the use of health and care services. I would therefore ask the Minister to ensure that any changes recommended in an action plan are evidence-based and are effective. There's no point in producing an action plan before we have a good and clear view of what services we have at the moment and what is not and what is working. President officer, I will leave it there, but I do think we need to look at what local authorities are doing and make sure that everybody gets the services they require across the whole of Scotland. Thank you very much. I should, of course, have said at the start speeches around four minutes, please. Uh, I call Lewis MacDonald, uh, followed by Graeme Day. To congratulate Bruce Crawford on securing today's debate. Like others, I have seen the work of Sue Ryder firsthand because of the excellent work that is done at DVU Court and the Minister's own constituency in Aberdeen. It has been inspiring to see the facility develop over the years and to hear from users and families about the quality of the experience there. And I'm sure Maureen Watt would vouch for that. Sue Ryder's Rewrite the Future reports on the state of neurological care in Scotland have also made an important contribution in identifying, identifying where there are gaps in the provision of care and what must be done to fill those gaps. DVU Court has provided care for people with multiple sclerosis, motor neuron disease, cerebral palsy and acquired brain injuries over the last 13 years, allowing residents to live as independently as possible in shared houses and still to feel part of the local community. There are spaces, however, for only 24 residents, which means that many people in the Northeast who need expert care and supported living are not able to take advantage of these excellent facilities. A waiting list in this context is partly a problem of success, but it is a problem nonetheless to those concerned. And despite the quality of DVU court, there are uh, too many people under the age of 65 in the older people's care homes in Aberdeen as there are elsewhere. That is why Sue Ryder launched a campaign earlier this year to raise some 3.9 million to build a new wing at DVU court to accommodate an additional 20 residents. Only last week, I'm pleased to say, they were able to announce that the campaign had raised its first million pounds just five months after being launched. A great achievement by Sue Ryder and good news for people in the northeast affected by neurological conditions. The support provided at specialist facilities like DVU Court is important to residents and their families, but our wider health and social services must also be equipped to provide the care that people need to treat or manage their own symptoms and to live independently in their own homes. Sue Ryder's first 
Rewrite the Future report last year found that six of Scotland's 14 regional health boards either had no current plan for providing neurological health services to their populations or were unable able to say whether they had such a plan in place. Worryingly, when Sue Ryder updated this report this year, the number unable to report positively had increased from six to nine. So the Scottish Government's commitment to developing a, a national action plan for neurological conditions is welcome. But as with all such plans and strategies, actions matter more than words. As Al Alan Milburn said in another context at the weekend, it's not what you say that counts ultimately, it's what you do. The Scottish Government has promised that the first nat national action plan on neurological conditions will be published next summer. And I hope the Minister will be able to confirm that today. I hope she will also confirm that additional resources will be provided to health boards to allow them to take the actions required under the action plan and the, that these will relate to levels of need. The incidence of multiple sclerosis, for example, in the Aberdeen area is one of the highest in the world. General funding of NHS Grampian is lower year on year than the NRAC formula says it should be. It would do no one any favours in the North East to impose additional spending requirements on NHS Grampian without also increasing the resources available to meet those needs. Sue Ryder will continue to campaign for improved care for those with neurological conditions. They will do so with the support of members across this chamber. And I am confident that we will soon be congratulating them uh, on reaching their next million pound milestone in raising funds for a very welcome expansion of DVU Court. And I look forward to continued cooperation among all parties and between government and uh, the agency itself uh, in delivering the quality of care that people with neurological conditions require. Thank you. I call Graham Day to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. But let me begin, as is customary, by congratulating my friend Bruce Crawford for securing this member's debate. It allows members to highlight not only the Don't Write Me Off report, but also the work of Sue Ryder Home Care staff across Scotland. In my own constituency of Angus South, we're lucky to have a a Sue Ryder team that can offer expert care for people living with neurological conditions, a specialist service that most areas in Scotland do not yet have access to. I want to highlight the uh, tailored care that Sue Ryder offers service users in Angus, not simply to blow, blow the trumpet of my constituency, but in the hope that it points the way for the wider care provider community in terms of supporting people with neurological conditions and allowing them to live as independently as possible. Since the provision of home care started its move across from Angus Council to external organisations, Sue Ryder has become one of the largest home care providers in the area. The team based in Arbroath currently operate with a staff of 47, delivering 1,300 hours of care a week for over 200 service users. As well as day-to-day, -day, home care Sue Ryder staff in Angus offer help with the end-of-life care, provide respite to carers and short-term rehab programmes so people can leave hospital sooner and continue their recovery at home. Presiding officer, to be honest, I, I usually cringe when I hear that phrase, person-centred. For me, firstly, it represents the kind of jargon which pervades the service element of the public sector. And secondly, on the ground, it's all too often deployed simply to mask delivering the kind of care and support an individual is going to be given, rather than what their circumstances require, or indeed they want. But it does seem to me that the Angus Sue Ryder team do reach beyond the standard care process and provide users with a tailored service that truly focuses on their overall quality of life. They don't write me off report urges health care professionals not to focus on the neurological disease, but on the experience of living with a condition and how that informs the person's whole life, which means listening to and considering them as a person, not simply treating them as a patient with a condition. The Angus team's desire to put this approach into practice is demonstrated by the organisation of their Christmas party this Thursday. As we're all aware, life with a debilitating neurological condition can be lonely and isolating, especially at this time of year. This party acts as an opportunity to bring service users together in a social setting, in the company of the familiar faces of the Sue Ryder home care team, and with local school kids taking part. This approach to building relationships outside of working hours isn't just confined to annual gatherings. Recently, for example, the team at Sue Ryder Angus uh, took an elderly service user out of her home to see the town's Christmas lights. And on another occasion, a member of staff accompanied a lady to a family member's wedding, allowing her to take part in that special day with the support of a specialist carer by her side. To me, that sounds like genuine person-centred care, tailored to the needs and wishes of the individual. 
The care provided by the Sioux Rider team in Angus is greatly valued by those in receipt of it and is frequently rated by the care inspectorate as excellent. In the inspectorate's most recent report on the Sioux Rider team, one service user described the staff as superb and acknowledged of the staff that some go above and beyond. Only last year, Sioux Rider colleagues in alongside uh, Sioux Rider colleagues in Stirling, uh, with whom it, uh, they collectively make up the Scottish Home Care team, uh, representatives from Angus scooped uh, the accolades of Team of the Year and overall winner uh, at the Sioux Rider UK Awards in recognition of the Scottish team's commitment, resilience and excellent care. Presiding officer, those of my constituents who live with a neurological condition have access to top class personal home care from the Sioux Rider team. As we seek to make the Scottish Government's quality strategy on health care a reality by 2020, I hope it's seen as a role model for elsewhere in Scotland. Presiding officer. Call Alexander Stewart to be followed by Gillian Martin. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to participate in this debate and I'd like to pay tribute and congratulate Bruce Crawford in securing it this evening. Mr Crawford's motion asks that the Parliament recognises the devastation and the impact which a neurological condition can have on the lives of those affected uh, and also by the families that surround them. Uh, and it must be a very harrowing situation to find yourself in that position being supported uh, by your family. And the statement in itself uh, pinpoints uh, and is very poignant uh, and, and recognises uh, that there's a, a huge push that is required to take forward. And I've been looking at other uh, types of diseases uh, that are of a similar nature uh, and, and uh, look forward to uh, dealing with my own uh, uh, report uh, and Members' Bill uh, coming in the next few weeks uh, about uh, brain tumour, because it, once again it shows the, the, the disability that people suffer. And during the time that I've taken some research to look at this whole area of neurological care, uh, Sue Ryder are without question, Deputy Presiding Officer, a real beacon uh, and a real force to be recognised. Uh, and I had great pleasure uh, in attending the recent parliamentary event, which gave us the opportunity to find out more about what's taking place. But I was disappointed uh, at the Health Board's continual slow reaction to these uh, and individuals who have a neurological condition. Uh, you know, the, the situation is quite tragic uh, and, and the plans that are put in place uh, are vitally important. And we've heard already this evening about the health care and social care integration that's still causing some concerns. Uh, the Sue Rider organisation wants everyone with a, a condition in Scotland to receive incredible care. And that is what we'd all want to see happen. Yet in reality, we've found that across Scotland, it can be patchy, it can be poor, and it can sometimes be not that well coordinated. Uh, and that's difficult to understand uh, for these individuals uh, and their families who are facing that situation. The patients feel that they are possibly once again stuck in a, a lottery uh, and a postcode lottery when coming to that. And to find that nine out of the 14 health boards have no uh, neurological services plan and six of them uh, were, were not currently uh, intending and in bringing one forward. Now that is a real scandal situation but I know that the government are now looking and addressing some of these issues uh, but it is vitally important that we'll recognise and look forward to what can be achieved. Actions are required, not words and not documents, but actions uh, and it's time for uh, the Sue Rider charity and they've, and they've got the new Rewrite and Future Report for 2017, which shows there is still a lot of work to be done on the ground to improve care for people with a condition. And we've talked about the, the councils having a role to play here and, and how they need to do much more uh, to be effective uh, in supporting people uh, who have these, these conditions. Mr Crawford's motion makes it very clear uh, that people uh, want to do all they can uh, who have a, a, a cooperation with people who have a, a condition. The third sector and public bodies have a part to play in ensuring that all of that is coming together. And that must happen for us to ensure that we can go forward uh, with confidence uh, in the processes. Uh, I would go further, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, and urge the Scottish Government that you know, over the 10 years that, that, that the momentum has gathered and it's vitally important that we commence urgent work 
on the overhauling of its of health board's plans to ensure that the quality of care for those who are living with a neurological condition is at the forefront, uh, because that is the ultimate that we're trying to achieve. These individuals, these families are suffering on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, and they have to have the confidence in the health service, and they have to have the confidence in the sectors that they look after. They shouldn't be relying on charitable organisations to provide them with that support and provide them with that care. Thank you. Call Gillian Martin to be followed by Anna Sarwar. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to Bruce Crawford for securing this debate and for hosting Sue Ryder in Parliament a few weeks ago, where I was able to learn more about the work Sue Ryder do across the country. But in particular, it gave me the opportunity to talk to Valerie Maxwell, the Centre Director of DVU Court in Aberdeen. For over 13 years, DVU Court has played a key role in the delivery of expert and compassionate long-term care for people with neurological conditions who are living with complex care and support needs. DVU Court is Scotland's only purpose-built specialist residential facility for people living with neurological conditions. And although DV Court is not in my constituency, it's very near to it being in Kincorth in Aberdeen City, in the Aberdeen South and North Kincardine constituency of my friend and colleague Maureen Watt. And some of their residents are from my constituency of Aberdeenshire East. We are tremendously fortunate to have a facility like DV Court in our area, but I'm conscious that most of Scotland does not have access to specialist residential care like this. The staff at DVU Court work closely with a range of health and social care professionals to deliver incredible 24-hour care and support to people living with very complex needs and neurological conditions. And they provide a safe environment in which people can live as full a life as is possible and where staff provide quality care and support. And as Lewis MacDonald has mentioned, they're very uh, integrated to the local community and live a full life there. Each resident has their own specially adapted room and is free to participate in recreational activities and able to get a good deal of their independence back in their own space, where many before have been reliant on family members for their care. Without access to a specialist resource like DVU Court, Sue Ryder's Rewrite the Future report highlights that many people suffer needlessly and are unable to live their lives as fully as possible. The fact is that given that many neurological conditions are no respecters of age, Without uh, specialist facilities, hundreds of people will end up in old people's homes because they have nowhere else to go for their care, as Bruce Crawford has mentioned in his very compelling opening speech. A place like DVU Court could have made a tremendous difference to the life of my brother-in-law, Keith, and his mother, Audrey, when his dad, Eric Allardyce, lost a great deal of his mobility due to the multiple sclerosis that developed in his late 20s and which eventually took his life when he was in his mid-thirties. Eric was cared for at home until his death by his wife, Audrey, who was only just managing to raise their, their child, Keith, and arrange part-time work around his care. But DVU Court's very existence is dependent on fundraising by Sue Ryder. And the need for more facilities like DVU Court is most definitely there. DV Court has a waiting list and wants to expand to be able to offer their expert care um, to more residents. And a couple of months ago, Sue Ryder launched a £3 million fundraising campaign to raise funds to build a much needed new wing and cater for an additional 20 residents. The planned extension will consist of 14 new ensuite bedrooms and six supported living apartments. But, President Officer, I want to end with good news. Just this week, they announced that it can be revealed that the generous and public-spirited people of the North East have helped them hit the £1 million mark in their campaign. And, President Officer, I'd like to close by letting everyone know how they can help them reach their target. You simply go to www.suerider.org, care centres, forward slash neurological centres, and find DVU Court to donate there. We can provide specialist care for over 20 more people in the North East, but we do need commitment from every health board to make services available that are appropriate for those with neurological conditions, whatever their age. The last of the open debate contributions is from Anna Sarwar. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I join others in congratulating Bruce Crawford in bringing forward uh, this debate and also for his important work with uh, Sue Ryder. The good work of Sue Ryder is widely recognised by parliamentarians across the chamber. It is almost 70 years' experience in the field of neurological care. 
So when Sue Ryder speaks, it speaks with authority, and I welcome their significant contribution to improving the care of and the lives of people in Scotland with neurological conditions. And part of that contribution has, of course, been in the form of the various reports published by them on the standard of neurological care in Scotland. These reports highlighted the many benefits of consistent care and support. And they are clear that a properly delivered health and social care strategy can help people with neurological conditions live life as fully as possible. But in their 2016 report, Sue Ryder also highlighted a number of areas of concern. A lack of consistent data, national clinical standards not being followed, patchy provision of services, long-term service delivery plans not being in place, and some people with neurological conditions being treated in non-specialist locations. A poor report card on neurological care in Scotland. That led to the Scottish Government rightly initiating a review of clinical standards, as well as a commitment to gather better data in Scotland. And while there is some progress at a national level on data collection, with the first set of data due to be published next spring, sadly not much appears to be changing for people on the ground. Of particular concern is that for the many the situation appears to be getting worse. Nine out of Scotland's health boards had no neurological service plans, despite this being a requirement of national clinical standards. One said it had a draft plan, while four had plans which were due to expire. But it gets worse. Despite there being a national policy direction rightly for the development of a joint neurological care plan between health boards and local authorities or integration boards, only one has started to do this. That is frankly not good enough. The evidence is clear, presiding officer, that the integration of health and social care has so far done little to improve services on the ground. And I'm sure that's something all of us across this chamber, regardless of political party, will want to see made right. Because there is a real risk of people being left behind as the reforms continue. And that's why I request the Scottish Government to do more than just produce a national action plan, although that is important, and then simply hand the plan over to independent joint boards and hope for the best. The Scottish Government has to show real and ongoing leadership on this issue to make sure we see genuine improvement across all health boards across the country. In particular, if the National Action Plan identifies the need for new resources, as Bruce Cofford has said, I would hope the Scottish Government would commit to those new resources. And will Health Improvement Scotland be given the resources to monitor the new standards and drive forward improvements to make sure we have a consistent approach right across the country? This is crucial because the last set of clinical standards were not being delivered. And in truth, because nobody was monitoring their implementation, it made it harder to deliver those standards right across the country. Presenting officer, the Scottish Government has uh, rightly led people to the expectation that services will continue. Uh, they have worked closely to deliver uh, and implement, uh, to deliver, sorry, an action plan across uh, the country. I would hope on those improvements around uh, resources across the country, on Health Improvement Scotland actually monitoring progress across the country, and also making sure we have deliverable and delivered clinical standards across the country would be something that we can all get behind and is something I hope the Minister will address in our closing comments. Thank you. I call Maureen Watt to respond to this debate. You have around seven minutes, please, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I'm very pleased to be able to respond on behalf of the government. And I'd like to take this opportunity to commend Bruce Crawford for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And I'm encouraged by the commitment across the Parliament to improve the quality of, of life of people affected by neurological conditions which, as Bruce Crawford said, have a profound effect not only on the individuals, but on the families and carers of those affected. And I want to ensure you all that this government is fully committed to improving the lives of people who live with neurological conditions. And the government very much welcomes the Sue Ryder report. It's a valuable contribution to the debate on how we make things better for people with neurological conditions in Scotland. Presiding officer, as a, government, we have an, as a government, we have an excellent working relationship with Sue Ryder and have been working closely with them over the past years. 
Indeed, the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Wellbeing will be visiting the Sue Ryder Centre in Aberdeen in January to continue discussions on our shared goals. Perhaps Bruce Crawford can go along at the same time. Uh, because as Lewis MacDonald said, uh, I am very familiar with the excellent care Sue Ryder provide from DU Court. Indeed, I'm a very frequent visitor there as I've held a constituency surveys, uh, surgeries in their premises in the past. And I'm very pleased to note that the fundraising campaign to expand the centre's facilities recently reached the £1 million mark. And I think this is testament to the quality, life-changing care which Sue Ryder provide, and perhaps presiding officer in the interests of transparency. I should declare an interest in so far as I provided a supporting statement for their bid for funding for the extension to the uh, Wolfson Foundation. I'm not sure if that's been revealed yet um, or not. Um, so I'm pleased to say that the government make, is making good progress on a number of the fronts which Sue Ryder have highlighted in their reports. We've listened to them and others who called for change around charges for personal care. We announced in the programme for government that we will now take steps to extend free personal care to all those under 65, fully delivering on the commitment to introduce Frank's law. This means that up to 9,000 people currently in receipt of personal care will no longer be liable for charges for the care they need. And this will assist many with neurological conditions like MND, MS and Parkinson's disease. We're also making good progress on improving the data which is collected on neurological conditions. And this data will assist NHS boards and integrator and authorities in forming better service planning that supports people with neurological con conditions. Our aim is to have this data set in place by spring 2018. Um, and I think that it's important that we're also committed to reviewing the neurological standards and health care improvement uh, are in the process of developing these new standards of care. We know from statistics that people living with neurological conditions mainly access primary and community care services. And as such, we expect the new standards to apply in a range of care settings across health and social care. And I think Graham Day admirably described the excellent level of care that Sue Ryder provide in Angus. And I hope that these <coughs> excuse me, high standards of care uh, will be replicated elsewhere. Um, because I think, as Jeremy Balfour said, most people do really want to live in the home or in a homely setting. These standards will be developed by a project group which will crucially include people who live with neurological conditions. It's vital that policymakers and healthcare professionals consult with them and listen to the people who have lived uh, experience because uh, they are the experts. We also note Sue Ryder's call for the new standards to be accompanied by a program of measurement and improvement improvement going forward and I can assure members that this is something which the government is considering closely and will be working with partners over the next year to explore what such a programme would look like and how it could be delivered. Sue Ryder have also been calling on the government to develop a national approach with regards to neurological conditions and again we've listened to that call. The Minister for Public Health recently announced that work has started on Scotland's first national action plan on neurological conditions. This new plan will support the development of integrated expert neurological and rehabilitation services, focusing on the needs of individuals living with neurological conditions across health and community services. And Gillian Martin mentioned the work of DVU Court but DVU Court, as well as in, having inpatient services, do provide excellent outreach services. They've recently um, introduced outreach services for people living with MS, which has had a fantastic uh, positive effect on those living with MS who have taken part 
in the outreach work that they do. So as part of this work, we'll be undertaking a programme of engagement with health and social care partners, partnerships to ensure that they're sufficiently cited and supported on the aims of our national action plan. The plan will incorporate the new national neurological standards being developed by Healthcare Improvement Scotland and will be designed to drive improvements for people in a range of healthcare settings. To ensure our approach to this new plan is open and collaborative, as much as possible, we are seeking to co-produce it in partnership with clinicians, the third sector, and of course, those who live with neurological conditions. We've also commissioned the Health and Social Care Alliance and the Neurological Alliance, working in partnership to engage with people living with a neurological condition so that we learn and understand their experiences of accessing services, as well as their priorities for the future. And I know that Sue Ryder, as well as others in the third sector, will continue to feed into this important work. The draft plan will be produced by summer and consulted on before being published later next year. The perspective of lived experience, presiding officer, is central to any work we take forward in this area. And as this work progresses over the next year, I would hope that we can rely on all of your support across the chamber to get involved and bring you your ideas forward. So, Presiding Officer, I'd like to close by offering my continued support for the work Sue Ryder do to represent and support people with neurological conditions, and again confirming that this government is fully committed to improving the lives of people living with neurological conditions around the country. Thank you. That concludes the debate, and this meeting is closed.